So welcome everyone to the Solutions for Homework 2 in Physics 211. If you're wondering when the solutions to the practice exam will be posted, I'm going to record those immediately after I do this, and those will go up either tonight or tomorrow, meaning Friday night or Saturday. So the first problem asks you to prove this. So you'll notice this is a kinematic statement about final and initial velocities, acceleration, and final and initial position. So it doesn't have time in it. We need to figure out how we can combine the two relations we know, which tell you position and velocity as a function of time, to eliminate t. This is sometimes called the third kinematics relation, the timeless relation. Sometimes it will make your life easier. You're never going to need it for, for the things that we're going to do on the first exam. So how do I do this? Well, I'm going to write down the position and velocity relations that we've been dealing with. And then my plan is to solve this for t and substitute back here. So we're going to solve for t and substitute here. So solving this for t, I get t equals v final minus v initial divided by acceleration. This makes sense. The amount of time that it takes to go from some final velocity to some initial velocity is equal to the difference between those velocities divided by the acceleration. Makes sense, right? So now I take this and I'm going to substitute up above. So let me come over here to do that substitution. So I'm going to plug that t in where it goes. So this gives me x final equals x initial plus v naught. Put in what I have there. v final minus v naught all over a. And then this term plus 1 half a times that stuff squared times v final minus v initial. But I'm going to write this in this way. I'm going to write this as a fraction with both numerator and denominator squared. Now, fractions are a pain. I want to get rid of my fractions. So, actually, I think this may be off the camera. Let me move this term back over. So that's going to be 1 half a times fraction vf minus v naught all squared over a squared. So I'm going to multiply by uh, 2a on, on both left and right. And I'm also going to move x naught to the left. So this gives me xf minus x naught all times 2a equals, let's see, the a that I'm multiplying by cancels this one. So I get 2 v naught vf minus v naught plus, now let's see, I'm going to have, since I'm multiplying by 2a, the 2 kills the 1 half. And I'm going to have a squared divided by a squared. So this gives me simply vf minus v naught squared. So now I need to simply simplify this. So I'm going to multiply out everything on the right. This gives me 2a xf minus x naught equals 2 v naught vf minus 2 v naught squared plus vf squared plus v naught squared minus 2 vf v naught. This is simply from the, the rules of, of multiplying algebra that you learned in, in middle school. So now I collect terms and cancel things. So I notice that 
this cancels with this, and that I have 2a xf minus x0 equals, so let's see, I've got plus v0 squared minus 2v0 squared, so this gives me vf squared minus v0 squared. And this is what was to be proven. So that's problem one. Let me talk a bit about this relation, when it's useful. Notice that this is a one-dimensional relation. We started with the one-dimensional position and velocity relations and used those to derive this one-dimensional statement about acceleration, position, and velocity. This is true only separately for x and y for any two-dimensional problem. So for instance, for the, uh, the Canon problem, uh, homework two, uh, problem two, the one I'm going to do next. Um, so you cannot use this for motion in more than one dimension, at least not without a modification that we're going to see later in the class. But if you have uh, motion in one dimension, then uh, this is very useful if you don't care about time.